Hey y'all, Carla Hall here. As we all shelter in place, eating out at a restaurant is not an option. And yet, there are holidays and graduations and all these special occasions that we like to celebrate with food. For example, did you know that every year 92 million Americans make reservations to celebrate Mother's Day at restaurants across the country? I mean, 92 million. Mamas like to be taken out. But even more than that, moms don't want to cook on their special day. So I'm going to walk you through a Mother's Day brunch menu that you can easily make at home and it'll taste like you're treating your mom, your aunt, big mama, or whomever you celebrate Mother's Day with to a restaurant quality brunch. So to make it super, super simple, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. A hookup, if you will. When I want to have restaurant quality food, and I don't feel like cooking it myself, I order directly from my chef friends over at Cuisine Solutions. Their specialty is cooking food using the sous vide method. Y'all are like, sous vide what? Some of y'all are like, ah, what are you talking about? Yeah, you've heard about it a lot even on all these cooking shows. It's a method of vacuum sealing the food in a bag and then cooking it in a water bath at a precise temperature. I mean, without going into all the details, all that flavor basically gets locked in. And these chefs make it possible to bring restaurant quality food into your freezer. And all we have to do is heat it up in our ovens or in the microwave or just drop the bag in a pot of boiling water. I mean, it's seriously that easy. And it's delicious. And for extra special holidays, like Mother's Day, it's always great to keep tasty, and delicious, easy for everyone. So for this Mother's Day brunch menu, we're gonna use Cuisine Solutions grilled salmon, kale and spinach egg white bites, lemon herb sauce, seasoned and grilled chicken breast, white beans with thyme and garlic, mmm, and coconut chia oatmeal. Seriously good. All of which will let us create a delicious brunch and with just a little bit of cooking on our part, you're gonna wow everybody. All right, everybody, the first thing we're gonna make is the grilled salmon patties. And we're gonna start with the Cuisine Solutions salmon. I have about three pieces. I call for a pound. This is just over 15 ounces and that's fine. Simple ingredients. I'm using Dijon mustard, breadcrumbs, onion, it can be grated, it can be red, it can be shallots, um, just a white onion, a yellow onion, and mayonnaise. And let me tell you why I'm using the mayonnaise. It's just super, super fast. Normally I would do eggs and oil, but all of your egg yolks and oil are here in the mayonnaise. And I just... So the first thing we're going to do is fork our salmon, just sort of shredding it. Just take two forks, or you can do it with your hands. I don't want to have to keep going back and forth and washing my hands. But let me tell you, this is so easy. The salmon cakes are the perfect brunch item. You can also go right into lunch, eat it on a salad if you want. Very Southern. So our mayonnaise. Dijon mustard. breadcrumbs. And now what I'm going to do is actually grate my onion. I don't need that much. It's just a tablespoon and just a regular box grater works really well. And now salt and pepper. So there's nothing in here that's raw so you can absolutely taste it before you start cooking them. Oops, I'm going away. Mmm. Uh, so good. What you should be tasting is a little bit of the, of the Dijon mustard, the creaminess of the mayonnaise, and that's it. We can let this sit for a little bit before we make the patties, make the, um, the breadcrumbs soak in all of that moisture, and then they'll be ready to form. All right, so now we're ready to make our grilled salmon patties. And I'm going to make about eight. I'm going to divide 
my mixture with a spoon right in half, like this right in half of my bowl. Then I'm going to divide that into quarters. I used to do this all the time when I was doing uh, catering. This helps you sort of eyeball how much you have. Then that's in quarters. And then each quarter, you know, will make two patties. So moms deserve, moms deserve all of this attention. I mean, I am a stepmom, but come on, I'm helping y'all. Um, we, we normally get off easy by going out, but this is going to be a great way to celebrate. So you just shape those patties like this, and I'm shaping them a little bit larger than my egg bites. So I still have my egg bites in the package, so I'm shaping them a little bit larger than the egg bites. Just keep in mind that the meat or the fish is already cooked, so you don't wanna overcook them. So I'm going in with a little bit of oil. I've got my tongs ready and handy, and it's hot, and I'm carefully placing them into the pan. You don't wanna to put too many in the pan at one time because the temperature of the pan is gonna drop, and you wanna make sure that you sear them, and it's and the, um, they're not steaming. So about three. It's already smelling really, really good. Can you smell that? Ah, that Dijon and then the onions. And this smells like my childhood right now. My dad would be in the kitchen making salmon patties, but he always made it out of canned salmon. This is gonna be so fresh and so delicious. All right, doesn't take that long. Ooh, look how beautiful and golden they are. That's what we want. That is what we want. All right. Salmon cakes, anybody? <laughs> salmon cakes, salmon patties, salmon croquettes, it's all the same thing. But the one thing that all of those things are is delicious. We're gonna do our take on the salmon patties Benedict. So we'll have the salmon patty, we're gonna do the egg bite on top, which are egg whites with cheese and kale. And then we're gonna put that hollandaise over it and an herb salad, really elegant for mom. So first things first, I'm going to melt the butter and not only melt the butter, and I have this in a Pyrex dish, I want it to get hot. So I'm gonna melt this butter until it's hot, about a minute. And then I'm going to add the lemon herb sauce. And this is a beurre blanc, so it's really a butter sauce. So then I'm gonna combine the two. All those beautiful flavors, like the tarragon and the lemon herb sauce are gonna marry with the melted butter, and that is gonna be the flavor profile of our hollandaise. While the butter is melting, I'm gonna separate my eggs. It's always easier to separate cold eggs because they don't, um, go through your fingers. I like to just separate them, put the egg right into the fingers of my hand. Make sure your hands are clean. Well, if you're gonna use these wipes later, and into my cup there. Okay, see that? All right, every microwave is different, but this is melted and it's somewhat warm. Um, I'm gonna make it even hotter. I'm gonna go in another 30 seconds with the lemon herb sauce. So I'm gonna just pour the lemon herb sauce right into the mixture and then heat it up. My butter's out of the microwave. You can see that it's steaming. You wanna make sure that it is steaming because it needs to be hot to make this sauce. I have my three egg yolks in here. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, that's gonna be an emulsifier. It's, it's like making a salad dressing. You know, we talk about emulsifying, when you take two things that wouldn't normally go together, like oil and vinegar, and you have an emulsifier, and it brings those two things together. So I've got the Dijon mustard. I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt here, just a little bit, and lemon juice, about a tablespoon. So you see how I cut the lemon on the side of 
the lemon, not straight down the middle because I don't have any seeds and I'm just gonna squeeze that right in there like that. And now I have my immersion blender and now you're gonna whiz up those eggs. All right, I'm gonna start pouring in the hot butter. So the hot butter is actually cooking those egg yolks. That's why you want to make sure that the butter is steaming. All right, let's give it a taste. That is so delicious. I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne. If you want more salt, add it now. Just a dash, like boop, boop, boop. And then a little more salt. And then that's it. That's delicious. Now here's our beautiful, look in there. Look at this. That's our beautiful sauce. You can see that it's still warm. So what you wanna do is keep this warm. If it gets too hot, it's going to break. That means separate. If it gets too cold, it's going to separate. If it's too thick, it will separate. If it's too thin, it will separate. But you can always, if it does separate, what you wanna do is get some hot water and <clears throat> start with your immersion blender again and whiz it back in. If it totally breaks, then get another egg yolk and you can bring it together and just slowly pour this mixture <coughs> in with the egg yolk and some hot water. Okay. So let's, let's start making our eggs, because we already have our salmon. Now our egg bites are super, super simple. They're already cooked. It's egg whites, there's cheese, like a Parmesan, there's kale. I am searing mine. You don't have to, you can actually put them in the microwave and they heat up perfectly like that. I like a little bit of color on mine. So I'm just gonna pop them out. They just pop out easy peasy like this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put just a little bit of oil in my pan. I'm searing them on medium heat. Let me bring that up to temp. And then they're just gonna get some color. And then that's it. I I'm telling you, easy, easy peasy. All right, so my egg bites have just been in the pan for um, three minutes or so, and I'm gonna turn them over. Look at that beautiful color. I happen to, sometimes I don't like color on my eggs, but in this case, I kind of like this char. But um, if you really like that silky smooth egg white um, omelet, then put them in the microwave because um, you know it, it just depends. But sometimes I do like a little bit of that texture. My French uh, culinary instructor will probably think blasphemy. Oh my God, do the egg whites are getting brown. Yeah, do what you want to do. All right, so we're ready to start building our Benedict. And I promised you one with the salmon patty. And if you don't like salmon, I also have chicken. So I use the grilled chicken breast. And as you can see on the chicken breast, you see where the, you see where the grain goes. Like the grain is going this way. That means we're gonna cut across the grain, perpendicular. So you see I cut my chicken breast in half first because when you cut it with the grain, it's just not as delicious and it seems a little tough. Let me taste this. Mmm, delicious. So lay your chicken down like that. Then you're gonna take your egg bite Put it right on top. And we have our hollandaise. 
which is still warm. Okay. I'm going to spoon the hollandaise right over the egg. Look at that. And if it feels like it's too thick, just add a splash of hot water and just stir it up. Look at that. All right, so this, for this herb salad, I've got some parsley, which I washed, and I have the leaves here, like whole leaves. I've got some dill. I didn't have any tarragon, but that would be really delicious. I had some thyme, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of thyme, not a lot. And then I had some basil leaves, so I'm just gonna um, tear the leaves. They're pretty large. So tear these leaves like this. I'm gonna grab the microplane. I'm gonna do a little bit of lemon zest, some salt, a little bit of oil. I'm just putting it, I'm doing it right here on the cutting board. Maybe a touch of lemon juice, tossing that up just like that. And that's just my little, quick little salad that's gonna be the raw, that's gonna cut through this rich but tasty hollandaise. Okay. We have salmon, and people who don't like salmon, they will have chicken. I told you that the Benedict was really easy, but the oatmeal is super, super easy. I just open the package and I put a portion of the coconut chia oatmeal in a bowl and I'm just gonna heat it up like that in the microwave and then I'm gonna garnish it with berries. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of salt because I like just a little bit of salt in my oatmeal. I'm also going to add some cinnamon because I like cinnamon. If you don't like cinnamon, don't add it, but it doesn't need it, but that's just me. I'm gonna pop it in the microwave until it's really hot. And I have my oven on broil because I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish it. While my oatmeal is heating, I have all of these berries. You see, I've got all of these berries. And you can do whatever berries you want. If you don't like berries and you prefer apples, you can cook apples or pears and you can make them in cinnamon. I just thought this was kind of a nice, light, springy way to celebrate Mother's Day, but also give her something that maybe is a little healthier if she wants that. So I'm gonna quarter my strawberries. And this is more than enough fruit, as I will be sharing. I've got some raspberries. I have these gooseberries, which are kind of tangy. I'm just gonna cut those right in half. And this is it on the inside. You see that? That's it on the inside. So that's perfect. And I've got some coarse brown sugar here to put on top under the broiler. It's not necessary. If you don't want that um, additional sugar or crunch, leave it out. This, the oatmeal is perfectly seasoned and sweet as it is. This is just gonna caramelize it kind of like a creme brulee. I'm gonna sprinkle this sugar right on top, like I would a creme brulee. I don't have a torch. I'm guessing you all don't either. Let me wipe the top. So no sugar is going to burn. All right. I'm going to put this on a sheet pan under the broiler and we'll see what happens. Oh, look at that. So here I have my oatmeal. It's a little charred around the outside. It's um, bubbling on top. It doesn't get that hard crackle that a brulee has. However, it does have this beautiful char. Be careful, it's hot, hot, hot. So now what I'm gonna do is just arrange my fruit. And that fruit, I think I'll put the blueberries on the bottom because they can kind of take the heat and so it's gonna be kind of hot, cold. I'm only gonna go on one side. Oh, it looks so good. Okay, I know it's good because you all know I love oatmeal and I have been eating so much of this. I think it looks really, really pretty. All right, it's ready for the tray. 
We're on our third dish, and honestly, it's as easy as the other two. I'm using the white beans with garlic and thyme. I'm also using some of the lemon herb sauce, which I'm just gonna put about a tablespoon in there. That is gonna be like the olive oil or the, the fatty part of this dish. I'm gonna put this in the microwave just to heat through, and then I'm gonna mash them. A little bit of salt and a squeeze of a little more lemon juice into the microwave. Here is it. A lot of people think that they don't like asparagus because they're soggy, but I am going to sear it in a cast iron skillet. And, you know, I'm just breaking the stems. I tend to not cut them because they break at just the right point where this piece is delicious and this is woody. But you can still save these for soup. So, breaking it off. Okay. A little bit of oil in my pan. It's fairly hot. And I'm just tossing the asparagus around in the oil. Can you see? Just tossing the asparagus around in the oil. And a little sprinkling of salt. Now what you don't want to do at this point is put lemon juice on a, the asparagus or like any green vegetable because what happens with that acid of the lemon or lime juice, it affects the chlorophyll in the green vegetables and then it makes them turn brown. We don't want that. So these are getting nice and charred. I have some bread that I'm going to cut. I got the bread that wasn't sliced already because I really want a nice thick piece of bread for this toast. I'm going to put them right in the oven because my broiler is already on. Or you can also put them on a grill pan. You can also put them in the skillet when the asparagus are done. Ooh, I love the smell of char, especially in a cast iron skillet, like the vegetables are so delicious. Wow. Working clean. We don't want to have a big mess up later that mama has to clean up. Or us. Alright, so here are our beans. They're not hot, they're just warm through. I'm going to get a fork and I'm just going to mash them roughly and mixing in that lemon herb sauce. If they're too loose, just put some more beans in the bowl. But really, I think it's gonna be great. And we don't want this to be smooth. We actually are just forking them, rough chop, kind of smooth. This is gonna be our sauce that goes on the bread. And then, um, the asparagus is going to go on top. Okay, how are our asparagus looking? Oh, these look so great. Alright, look at this. Right? There is flavor in the brown. Come on. Come on. Alright, let me taste to see if it needs anything. It's so good. That thyme really comes through. And a little bit of the tarragon and the lemon herb sauce. Mmm! Okay. That's done. Let me check my bread. It's slowly getting toasted. You know what? I'm going to throw it in the pan. I'm impatient. I'm like that. All right, my pan's already hot. I'm gonna do a little bit of oil in the pan. Getting some of that oil on the bread. Mm-hmm. Ooh. 
Ooh, and those, on this particular bread, the, um, the sesame seeds are getting nice and toasted. The thing about cooking under the broiler and in a pan, you have to watch it. Because if you don't, things are gonna get, they're gonna go real dark real fast. Oh, this looks, this looks so good. I mean, the other thing that you can do is put it in the toaster. <laughs> okay, if you put it in the toaster, then when it comes out, you can drizzle it with olive oil because I think that little bit of fat is great. I'm making it all hard on myself. All right, so this bread, it looks good. I've got that one. All right, so I have my toast. I have a couple extra pieces. Um, I'm gonna chop up some chives really quickly. You need a really sharp knife for your chives. I take it slow and I just slice through because I don't wanna crush the chives. All of that fancy cutting that a lot of chefs do, for me, I guess I can't do it and have these beautiful ringlets of the chives. And I have some radishes here. I'm gonna slice these up. And at this point, I'm thinking about color. So I love the color of radishes. Any radishes will do. You get so many slices out of one radish, they really do go a long way. And now what I wanna do is shave the asparagus. You could leave them just like this, but I like to shave them just because it, I don't know, I think the, the mouthfeel makes it nice. So I take a peeler. And I just, I'm saying I just, look at me, and I just take the peel like this. And then you have, you can do these raw as well. Okay, so I have my shaved asparagus. For these other asparagus, what you can do is just cut them on the bias. Everything is gonna be used. And that becomes part of our dish. So let's build. I have my toast. Shave asparagus. And for the for the radishes, I'm just gonna to toss them in a little bit of oil or lemon juice. Okay. And then we're gonna to to sprinkle it with some chives. That's it. That was easy, right? I'm telling you, I think mom's gonna be really impressed. I mean, Matthew was impressed. I'm gonna start with the coconut chia oatmeal with the berries. All right, enjoy your Mother's Day. Keep cooking for mom and for yourself.